understand where I am and what I'm doing here, or I'm not Michel Ardon. Looks like I'm not the only one who suffered a shock. This man seems utterly knocked out. Let me see. I'm pretty sure I know him. It's Barbicane, the president of the gun club and the man at the origin of the Columbia Project. Baltimore, October 5th, 1865. Barbicane, president of the Gun Club, proposes an undertaking worthy of the 19th century to build a giant cannon capable of shooting at an incredibly distant objective. An unconscious man. I recognize him. It's Captain Nickel, a famous engineer. Captain Nickel, a specialist in armor plating, is known for his rivalry with Barbicane, an artillery expert. Nickel claims that the gun club's project is impossible. Furious, Barbicane challenges him to a duel. A newspaper clipping. Hey, the article talks about me. Michel Ardon, famous French adventurer, volunteers to travel in the aluminum shell designed by President Barbicane. Michel Ardon manages to reconcile Nickel and Barbicane. Since you're the kind of men who dare risk their lives, he says, accompany me. You'll have front row seats to see which of you is right. So in the end, the shell is loaded in the giant cannon with three men on board. Good Lord, that blue star, it's the Earth. I'm in outer space. An enormous explosion tears the shell from the Earth's gravitational pull. Destination, the moon. On board, all the passengers have fallen unconscious. Everything's coming back to me now. The cannon, the shell. We actually left Earth. Fantastic! We're on our way to the moon. Nickel, Barbicane, and me. I seem to be the first to ever regain consciousness. I'd better wake up the others. What's this dark stain that's spreading? Is my friend injured? Michel Ardon briskly raises the blanket, covering his friend. My lord! I thought Barbicane was just unconscious, but he's... he's dead. And it's not the G-forces at the launch that killed him, but a bullet right through the heart. What happened? I've got to understand just what happened. This letter is the last message my friend Barbicane wrote to me. Michel. Fate dictated that Nickel and I awaken before you. We quickly realized that due to tragic negligence, we wouldn't have enough oxygen for three. The letter is torn. The rest is missing. 
After the shock of launch, President Barbicane and Captain Nicholl are the first to regain consciousness. While Ardant is still out cold, the two men realize that because of their negligence, their oxygen supply is insufficient for three men. One alone could survive. A monograph on lunar ideograms. I'm going to take this interesting essay with me. This bottle contains a disinfectant lotion made with cyanide. It has that odor of bitter almond that's so characteristic of this poison. Ugh, I'm suffocating. I'd better do something or I'm gonna be in a pickle. seem to be breathing better. What do you know? Traces on the glasses show that Barbicane and Nickel served themselves a drink. Barbicane and Nickel toast each other. Judging by the smell of it, this glass contains some very fine wine. I'd better not touch this glass. I can smell a suspect bitterness mixed with the bouquet of the wine. This wine is surely excellent, but the death of my companions has also killed off my desire to drink. Maybe I'll allow myself a glass once I've landed on the surface of the moon. Hmm. I'm almost ashamed to remove my worthy friend's hat. Perhaps I ought to put it back on his head. With a bit of string, I could tie this blanket around my friend to serve as a shroud. Then I could abandon his body in the vacuum of space. If the ocean serves as a sailor's grave, it's only fitting that space be the tomb of an interplanetary traveler. Cutting up Barbicane's hat, I found a letter signed Diana in the lining. It must be confidential if my friend took the trouble to hide it this way. Let's take a look. Sir, I will not seek any other excuse for my behavior than my passionate desire to visit the moon and to meet its inhabitants who I know for a fact exist. When it turned out that such a journey was possible, I would have given my all to participate. Nothing else was important in my eyes. Yes, I dreamed that you would love me, and that I would go with you to the moon. When I realized this was an illusion, I tried, out of spite, to seduce Captain Nickel. I wanted him to hide me in the shell, a stowaway. But Nickel proved as stubborn as you, and I was left alone with nothing but my shame. I do hope that you will pardon me, and beg of you to keep this confession secret, as it would utterly destroy my reputation were it to fall into the wrong hands. Farewell, sir. And when you are on the moon, please think kindly of one who would so love to have accompanied you. So, this Diana tried to seduce Barbicane, then Nickel, in the hope of taking off for the moon? Poor girl. The hearts of human beings are sometimes moved by strange passions. The old rivalry between Barbicane the gunner and Nicol the armorer is a fact. Furthermore, letters found on the two men seem to indicate that they were loved by the same woman, a certain Diana. Weren't there enough elements to rekindle the flames of a scarcely extinguished dispute?
The hypothesis of a quarrel provoked by a woman doesn't resist serious examination. A letter concealed in Barbicane's hat clearly demonstrates that Diana's advances were firmly refused by both men.